Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and this one's a doozy. This is a game called The Seventh Continent, and the story of how I got it is a story of not wanting to miss out, and then wanting desperately to miss out. I heard about this game, I saw people doing video reviews on it, and I thought, yeah, I don't know, it sounds interesting, maybe, I don't know, it's one of these games that you can spoil really easily, so a lot of the videos were, weren't giving any spoilers away, so it was hard to know a lot about the game without wrecking it for yourself. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll take a pass. Then I went to a local board game conference in my hometown, and I talked to some people about it, and they said, oh my god. You didn't get on the second Kickstarter? What's the big deal? They said, well, it's not gonna be available in stores. Uh, okay, I can probably live with that. No, it's not gonna be available in stores. Well, how do, you know, they're really freaking out about it. Maybe this is a game to pay attention to. So they had been running demos the entire weekend at the board game conference, and I missed out on the demos too. So I missed out on Kickstarter number one, I missed out on Kickstarter number two, I missed out on all the demos. And I talked to a guy and he said, well, you know, if you're up early Sunday morning, I could run a demo for you. This was a conference where I had maybe pushed the envelope a little bit and stayed up a bit uh, past my bedtime on the nights prior. We'd played a really long game of Tricarian the night before, which took about, you know, 23 hours. Uh, to explain the game. So when we got through that, I was not really excited about getting up that early. I did it, I braved it, and I went and I did the demo. We played just the first little bit of the game. I liked it. He said, you know what, I'm in the second Kickstarter and I can do a piggyback order. If you order with me, he said, I get a break on shipping and you get the game and you don't miss out, right? You don't have FOMO, fear of missing out. Hashtag no FOMO. Okay, I, I guess so. I'll get in on that. And then when I looked at the offering, it was the base game, and then they have the sequel, and then they have, you know, all kinds of extra trappings and different card packs and things. And I thought, oh man, how much is this going to cost me? Ladies and gentlemen, I have paid more money for this board game than I have paid for any board game in my collection. I've spent more money on it than I've probably spent on most things in my life. I don't really want to say the total, maybe it's a bit more expensive because I'm in Canada, but I paid four hundred dollars for this game. Four hundred dollars. Not the base game, the base game plus the sequel plus a bunch of extra card packs. I passed up on the burlap bag that you roll dice in because I don't even think there are dice in the game. I don't know. I don't know. It's nuts. I lost my mind and now I have it and uh, like I hope it was worth it. If you want <laughs> to be like me and find out what's actually in the box, here we go. Let's unbox it. Uh, get my knife. I hope to God the camera and the audio are both recording because I only get one shot at opening <laughs> at opening this game. Unbeknownst to Ryan, even as he made this joke, he had forgotten to press record on his overhead camera, causing him to film the entire unboxing without providing his audience a view into the actual box. Steps have been taken to depict the box contents in a series of shots gathered after the live unboxing footage was filmed, but I mean, come on. Oh boy, here we go. All right. There's the shrink cracked resale value, zero dollars. <laughs> um, that is zero on the box fartometer. I mean, that's where your money goes, is eliminating box fart. Uh, there's a rule book inside, as I hoped there would be. Uh, I'm not gonna read it to you. These are player mats. So this is, a <laughs> this is a weird game. I don't own anything remotely like this game in my board game collection. I own a lot of games like this on my computer. So it's like a board game version of a graphic adventure game. And I love graphic adventure games. I've designed a bunch of them myself as a video game developer. So you've got Spot, that's like your look icon, eat and drink, rest, cure, fight, hunt, take, handle. Little markers depicting all of your different characters. 
There's a bit of a Lovecraftian bent to this one. I find this a lot with board game artists. They can draw UI or interface. They can draw land really well, borders on cards and, and, and iconography and things like that reasonably well. But when it gets to drawing faces and you get, you know, something like that. I don't know. It gets a bit iffy, to be honest. This is a little um, hopper or chute that you build. There's bad cards and they go into the chute or they start in the chute and you pull them out of this, this chute or this hopper. Little standees for the figures. Where are the figures? Oh yeah, this is, this is another crazy thing about this game that I've never seen any other game do. This is like a magnifying glass because the whole game is played out in these tiles that you lay down that, that build out this map and there's hidden stuff. And if you notice these hidden, um, uh, I think it's numbers, you get to augment the cards on the table with other cards that, that reveal new artwork because you've noticed these tiny little specky things. That's unique. That's completely new to me. I've never seen that. Oh look, hey cool, there are dice. They're little, they're little baby dice. All alone in the world, don't, don't have a mama. And these are itty bitty little figures that you play with in the game. These are your characters that you run around. I almost don't want to open this because they're going to go flying and then the cats are going to eat them. These are all little fires. It's sort of like a survival game. It's very important to have fire or else you get exposed to the elements and this kind of thing where you get, you know, wound cards that hurt your character. But man, look at the detail on these things, these tiny little figurines. I'm going to wiggle one loose, the most delicate one. That is a teensy tiny little figure with a lot of little detail on it. If you're into painting minifigs, these ones could drive you insane. Most of what's left in the box are these packs of cards. And so with this game and other games like it, I guess I would put maybe Charterstone in the same category. You get all these packs of cards and you put them all in and they're all numbered. And as you build out the island that you're playing on, it says, you know, grab card 357. Like a Carcassonne tile laying map layout, except the tiles aren't randomized. They're actually specific tiles that you have to place in specific locations. So back to that little player card full of actions, you know, you could be on a tile and you'd be like, I wonder what's to the east. And you actually have to take one of these actions to investigate what's to the east. And anybody you're playing with could say, I also would like to look to the east. And then sometimes the card that you put down is like, there's a big explosion to the east and whoever looked there was blinded. And you and your friend are like, oh crap. You take wound cards and you can play it solo. It's unlike anything I own except on the computer. And I definitely would not pay this kind of money for a graphic adventure game. You can get dozens of them in a bundle for you know, five bucks or whatever. I'm really interested to see if playing it on the table makes any sort of difference, if I can get other people to be interested with me and play through multiple sessions and campaigns. I know that there's a whole save state for the game where you put certain cards in certain pouches and you can rebuild the section of the, uh, of the land that you were exploring quite easily. Um, that's unique, cool. So I guess, you know, it's the fear of missing out and the interest in something uh, new to put in my collection that drew me to the seventh continent. There is uh, your unboxing of uh, probably what I think is the most costly game that you can possibly add to your collection. But uh, if you didn't get in on the Kickstarter, you missed out. Huh. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.